that looks good. Uh, long time. Hello, Terry. Nice to see you, Terry. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> long time. Yeah, long time. Um, we didn't see each other since in Manila. Yes, yes. It's nice yes. to see you in Divas. Yes, yes. Thank you. I I'll be more active. Yeah, and then so that we can follow all your posts too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Magandang magandang gabi Pilipinas. Magandang magandang gabi Batangas. Yes. Guess po natin si Terry. Nako. So, actually we are live from uh, my Facebook uh, channel as well as my YouTube channel. Okay? We're streaming there as well as on Vim TV. I hope it is working fine on the Vim because uh, I already click some button here. <laughs> and it says uh, connecting. I hope it will do well. Yan, it's connecting already. So, magandang magandang gabi po. Nako, mga kasama. Napakaganda. Napakaganda po ng ating uh, uh, pag-uusapan ngayon at sa mga nakakakilala sa ating uh, uh, guest. Nako, sa daigdig ng crypto. Nako, ay... Maraming makukwento Of course, medyo inglesero itong ating guest Pero marami tayong matututunan Pero bago tayo pumunta sa at ipakilala ang ating guest Abay, daanan muna natin Daanan muna natin ang ating paboritong platform Ito po yung Dibaz. ano So, ito po, pinapakita ko po sa inyo sa screen natin Yung kung ano yung uh, uh, post dito sa aking homepage ano? Dito sa ano? sa Dibas, aba si Eya ano ha? Uh, shout out kay Eya uh, alam ko estudyante ko po si Miss Eya ayan si Joyce Buzz ayan si Lavien nakulara, ayan so, ay, mga estudyante ko po yan, they are posting and uh, I onboarded them at sila po ay actively participating at oh, marami pa pong mga activities kaming pagsasamahan sa Dibas yung mga magagaling kong mga STEM students, ABM student and even yung mga ilang kong mga small student who are actively uh, uh, participating and uh, posting on Dibas kaya kayo po sa mga interesado po sa Dibas uh, mag message lang po kayo sa amin at uh, kung paano po kayo uh, matututo at magiging bahagi ng community na ito. Ano? Dahil uh, ito kasi bukod sa isang social media din lang naman ito, ano? Kapareho din ng uh, iba, pero may mga advantage at may incentivization. Kaya ibig sabihin may mapapala. At uh, kung gusto niyo malaman kung mapapala, apa i-message niyo po diyan sa comment section kung kayo ay nanonood sa Facebook, kung kayo ay nanonood diyan sa sa YouTube ika nga uh, o kanaya kayo na sa Vim na live apa ay kayo po ay mag-message laang para ma masagot po namin ang inyong mga queries. Ayan. So, at pinapakilala ko pa rin ang isang magandang balita. Merong magandang balita dito sa ating laging binabasa na online newspaper, itong pillnews.xyz. Ano? Itong pillnews.xyz ay may magandang feature. At ito po yun, nako, yung mahihilig dyan sa airdrop, abay ito ang inyong uh, basahin at kayo ay talagang uh, makikinabang dito. Ano? Ito pong Red Sark. Itong Red Sark ay isang bagong game sa high blockchain upcoming, darating, dinedevelop. And of course, nag-release na po sila ng white paper. Ayan. Uh, dito sa XYC, pillnews.xyz, ay na uh, na feature ang uh, white paper o ay yung at least yung article na kung saan ay naglo-launch ng Red Shark. So sabi dito, let me read, Red Shark is a strategic trading card game hosted on the high blockchain developed by Data Loft LLC, the creators behind the D.Bus microblogging pla platform o pioneer in Hive. So uh, kayo na may hilig sa uh, NFT games may ilig sa airdrop, may airdrop po dito. Ano? At ang clue kung paano kayo makaka-take advantage dito sa uh, sa larong ito, doon sa airdrop process ay dapat po kayong naka-sign up at may account 
and active nagpa-participate sa Dibas. Ano? Nako, ayan ay tanong itanong ninyo sa akin, itanong ninyo yan doon sa GC, itanong niyo yan doon sa sa ating uh, comment section. Nako, ire-reply lang po natin namin kayo at para ituruan namin po kayo. Kasi alam niyo ga, yung mga airdrop na yan ay mga paraan kung paraan paano makakakuha ng mga free asset, free tokens. Na yes, nabebenta po ang mga free tokens na yan. Ang mga free asset ng laro, nabebenta po yan. May halaga po yan. Kaya, samantalahin po ninyo. Napahagandang laro. At ito na po yung mga trend na laro ngayon. Ano? So, uh, kayo po, basahin nyo po ito sa pillnews.xyz at nang uh, kayo din ay maging bahagi ng lumalago at lumalaking community ni Dibas at saka yung mga... NFT games. Ayan nako hindi na ako makapaghintay at talagang po-focus na tayo dun sa ating uh, meeting. Itong ating guest talaga ay veterano na. He is a veteran in cryptocurrency way back 2016 from the last conversation that uh, I have with him and uh, he also has a project on his own and of course I guess he's still living in the Philippines <laughs> and uh, nako uh, He will be the one be telling about himself and uh, presenting himself and all the projects and opportunities that he can he can discuss it with us. So, uh, with the uh, with the uh, indulgence of my friends here, uh, we ha we have uh, other uh, uh, members of the Divas. Uh, let me call on uh, Terry Terry Ajayi, also known as Surpassing Google. Terry, how are you? Yeah, uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Glad to be here. Well, it's, it's been a long I'm time, great. Terry. Right? Uh, yes, we, yes. Well, uh, we've been uh, we know each other from the Steam It era, the Steam era, and uh, I've been following yeah. you in Facebook. And there's a lot of uh, ups and downs that I see in your post, but I'm sure yeah. you conquer them all. And you are still surpassing Google. So, uh, for the start, uh, can you introduce yourself and how tell tell uh, tell the audience how did you start with this cryptocurrency? Okay, okay, um, okay. So my name is Terry, and uh, my ambition is the world adjusting ambition of surpassing Google, and. Uh, I'm still in the motion to surpass Google. Uh, so I found cryptocurrency, although I won't refer to it as cryptocurrency at this stage. Uh, it started out as cryptocurrency, but has advanced uh, to what we call Web3. So if you don't know what Web3 is, it's like the next generation of the Internet. And it's made up mostly of decentralized applications. So applications similar to Facebook, but decentralized in nature. So if you didn't know, if you are a user of the internet, there is another internet, which will become the stable internet maybe in 10 years time. So if you are in Web3 at the moment, you are you know, advanced than your peers. So crypto is just a component of Web3. You know, it's uh, the basis for governance, reward distribution, uh, utility as well. So I, I found uh, Web3 in my search for a better world. You know, so the existing world was limited. And then when you turn to the internet to look for a safe haven, you are met with obstacles. So during those times, uh, say you wanted to reach an audience in USA, for example, the internet is structured such that it limits you. You know, you need third party authorization for every action and transaction, meaning you are limited, meaning you don't have the capacity of flourishing to your highest potential or the capacity of surpassing Google. Uh, because to access your own data, for example, on Facebook, there is you need authorization from Facebook, you know, run by one man, the person of Mark Zuckerberg. 
So he has access to your data, the very person of you, your identity, and you don't have any knowledge about him. You know, he has monopoly over your data. He can decide to uh, deter you from accessing your data or delete its existence. You cannot do the same for him. Thus, he becomes the god, you know, the hallmark, the recurrent influencer, and you stay put as a consumer, a, cl a recurrent client. You know, so I was looking for a new internet with limitlessness, and in my approach to using the internet, I was explorative and very expressive, especially in my search queries. You know, so I don't follow the standard of correctness, the secular standard of standard of correctness when it comes to the way I express myself. So I would try in the search engine different search queries, you know, uh, let's call it unconventional search queries. And uh, uh, underlyingly, I was also meaning to share past Google and that paradigm guards everything I do, including the way I search the internet. You know, so I would uh, formulate different search queries without knowing the terminologies blockchain or crypto. You know, so when I when I was doing all these searches at the time, I didn't know of the existence of even the term crypto. You know, to be able to s search crypto in the search engine. So I was just looking for. Uh, boundless internet, you know, stuff like that. I didn't even know the term decentralized. And then, uh, in the course of doing that, I would find many platforms, you know, promising the prospect of earning online. And that is, at a superficial level, is a turn off for me because during my S expeditions on the internet, uh, I, I started to grow tired of those promises. Uh, so what enabled me find crypto was a platform called Steemit because I found it organically and it didn't carry the promise of monetary incentive. You know, I found a post of an author that ranked organically on Google that solved my inquiry. And then upon reading the post, uh, I did see that there was some earning, you know, but I didn't know of what I didn't know what it was, and that was not the driver for me. So I ended up arriving on Steemit, and that was my first encounter with Web3, you know, without knowing that it was Web3. But what I found on Steemit was a home, you know, a place where I could have ownership for the first time, you know, because what helps me very quickly is conversations like this so there used to be a discord voice channel that was running 24 hours re relating to steam it so i jumped on that one day and that was very early on in my journey on steam and i had a list of questions i asked about it and then found out okay there was no censorship here the distribution of the content is based on uh diff Oh, no, let me say the curation was decentralized, so everyone had a voice when it comes to uh, uh, establishing which content gains visibility. And those were, those were mind-blowing prospects to me. And before then, I was surpassing Google, like I said. You know, the first group I created on Facebook, my venture to surpass Google that I managed to grow, it was deleted by Facebook. You know, uh, I don't know what I did then. I think I I shared the the group to Mark Zuckerberg basically in a chat, and then the next thing it was deleted. So those limitations they had impact, such an impact on me because I was also here in the Philippines alone. You know, no support system. I was not going to work. I came here basically to undertake the mission of surpassing Google. I left my parents in a bid to return to them as surpassing Google. You know, so I was here alone. I wasn't going to take a job and stuff like that. So those things, they had tremendous impacts on me, you know, in terms of, you know, crushing me basically. So when I found the prospect of this, an immutable blockchain where you, you will put content and it stays in permanent forever, 
you know, that was mind blowing for me. That was like legacy centric, you know, and that's what I'm about. The ability of leaving a mark that is center proof till eternity. And, you know, so uh, that's how I found Steam It. And when I started Steam It, uh, Incentive, monetary incentive was secondary, even though I didn't have any dime in the Philippines. You know, like I said, no support system, I wasn't going to work. And I was earning, you know, because that time I used to write my draft and my draft will contain my project ideas. You know, I felt, okay, this is a place where you will, you will not lose it. So I wasn't concerned about the audience, I was con I was my primary audience. I started to formulate new use cases for content, such as an avenue to mine your human or evolve. You know, so I would not mind the the standard of a blog or a vlog, which is Web2 native content. And I will just, I'll create content as an avenue to exert my abilities and mine of myself. And then I'll have a draft written out at that time, I would put a Discord, and people were liking this stuff, even though it was not conventional. And then they would go on the Discord, and very quickly, I had like 1,000 people on the Discord. You know, then I, I started earning as well, but I did not uh, venture into the wallet aspect of my account till months later. Even though, like I said, I didn't have a dime in the Philippines. I think it took. I, I don't know how many months, maybe six months before I ventured into the wallet aspect to find another dimension of Web3 that is powerful, basically an entire bank. So in the secular system of things, you pursue money, you have to relinquish your P2P capabilities as a human, become a rat, practically to enter a rat race, you know, to pursue money that is not yours. Then suddenly I saw an entire bank in the form of my Web3, my crypto wallet. You know, you can transact peer to peer without third party authorization needed. Uh, and the trans record of the transaction is stored immutably. So there is accounting. Everything that constitutes a bank was in that wallet. And this was also mind blowing. You know, to where I, you know, I earned a lot of steam. Uh, if I had I, if I had sold my steam that I earned from all this because I ended up with you know some 19,000 comments and posts I did many project uh, I, I did many case studies let me put it case studies because I was en route surpassing Google so the the value proposition of steam to me and web3 in general are the humans on it because suddenly these humans are an advanced breed of humans because they're beginning to recapture their p2p nature because in the course of using steam platforms like steam there are many things that happen towards your evolution you know like you mentioned you know people on dbuzz posting <clears throat> if you have to create content on a daily basis your basic human rights relevant to your invincibility is being restored because that's the first thing taken away from you in the secular system of things the ability to create and in this context create content you know because they put the standard of a blog or a vlog uh, and then suddenly you are not a blogger or you, let's say you're not confident of your english and you say oh i cannot blog you know you're worried about bashing you know, but suddenly you have a blockchain and it's also incentivized with cryptocurrency. So you recapture that basic creative ability, which I consider the basis of your invincibility. And so I consider <clears throat> the value proposition of Web3 is the P2P humans. So I call them P2P humans on it. So that was my ambition when I was on Steam. You know, the the monetary earning was secondary. I was using platforms like Steam to pay attention to fellow humans. So I did, you know, very widespread curation, you know, where I will vote on people's content, maybe up to 2,000 people in a week with comments, 
and I will be really be paying attention to the person in question. You know, I'd factor in a timeliness element into my vote. You know, for example, there are so many things I did, <clears throat> and it brought about a whole case study and all the knowledge and insight I was looking for in the course in, in that re that is necessary to surpass Google. I found it right there on Steam. So even though my valuation of my wallet, if I had sold everything at the top, would have been like 500,000 USD from that Steam platform alone, I didn't sell. You know, I ended up uh, forgetting it sort of and you know, didn't get the maximum value monetary wise, but I got it in terms of surpassing Google. Because on there, I was able to create my own form of content, which was called Ulogs, which is now a Web3 native type of content that will power surpassing Google. And it's, you know, the inverse of a blog or a vlog allows everyone to become Uloggers. Then the native token of my eventual project will be teardrops to reward proof of tears. You know, and Ulogs did not just start. It started out as a tag called untalented, you know, because people were having limitations when it comes to posting because they arrived there with the popular paradigms that you have to be a vlogger, you have to be a, blog, a blogger and perfect, you know, so they were have experiencing limitations. So I started uh, an initiative called untalented at the start, which gained traction because many people felt that they, there were no bounds when it comes to content creation any longer in, under the umbrella of untalented. Then I had evolved that into ulogs, you know, a form of content where you is you. So it has a surpassing Google paradigm. You create it afresh per instance without researching Google. So uh, that's where I found teardrops and I learned everything about what will become Surpassing Google in the future. And when Surpassing Google comes into fruition, fruition and it manages to attain that world adjusting impact that I have as part of my legacy, and it begins to make money, I believe that it will surpass Google even monetarily. But along the line, there are many things that happened as well. I lost my health, basically because of too much, you know, I was functioning like a bot at the time. So, so I lost many things in terms of health, ability to sleep, and I've not recovered from that ever since because there has been no space to, and just because of my nature, you know. So till today, I help hundreds of people let me put it weekly you know i'm like the troubleshooting arm of the of the web free space basically but you know something i got a bashing recently and that's why you need to be in web 3. so after doing 3500 videos about web 3 on youtube with around 10,000 subscribers they deleted my youtube then they went on to delete my twitter which I was also using to help many people per day tend to their inquiries because the Web3 space is not safe. You know, once you pose a troubleshooting inquiry, you are bound to have uh, probable scammers pose as helpers and, you know, then they give you a phishing link or something and you lose your funds. So uh, there's need for safe troubleshooting. In fact, it's possible to create an entire venture around that you know, so, but they took my Twitter and what they do is they also threaten you, you know, not to ever create a Twitter or a YouTube. So they start tracing the other uh, Twitter accounts. So next they targeted my 12 year old Twitter account. And these people, you know, we're using their platform right now. They have too much monopoly of the world. The powers are too much. That's why it's of essence to have at least awareness of and another powerful alternative in your arsenal so that you can move like a full-fledged human. You know, you know that, for example, with the bashing I got from YouTube, and now I, I got this bashing at a time when I'm starting all over, you know, I, I'm really down and they just gave it to me back to back. You know, but what did I do after the bashing? 
I ended up writing the documentation for a project. The name of the project is called Xayop. And I would like to, I'll show you the documentation later on after this, you know, for you to read it. Because I know that I have an arm in the Web3 space in the face of these third party, you know, power people, power players. So uh, the project is Xayop. The system of things is Xayop. You know, they use psychological operations to capture the world. Uh, so I'm trying to reverse the limiting impacts of a PSYOP with a project called XYOP. It's a very interesting project. Uh, uh, basically, the aim is to gather 1,000 P2P humans uh, and move in concert. So that's one limitation that the world lacks, and it's because of the third party influences in existence, the ability to move in concert. You know, for example, we are attempting to move in concert here. We have eight people online, you know, but uh, Google can enter into the mix right now and the limits that possibility. You know, moving in concert is, let's say everyone is on a joint mission on Twitter to promote debugs, for example. And let's say, because of constant uh, promotion of what they consider a third party platform, one of the members is giving a hit, maybe a suspension on their Twitter account. It will very quickly tarnish the concerted effort because now you will start to have fears of, the next person will start to have fears of like, uh, uh, bashing from Twitter, and before you know it, the the concert dilutes and there is no movement. So I'm trying to elevate past that by first the flagship product is the first and only ordered knowledge base about Web3. It's going to have 1,000 videos. So I've started that. I'm currently in video number. I'm about to do video number 43. So that will be the flagship uh, product, but it's also a legacy ambition of mine because I'll be able to create a resource that generations yet to come will have access to that constitutes a knowledge base for Web3. And when I say knowledge base, I mean one that is in order from start to finish and has a directional element. So uh, directs people to the eventuality of launching their own Web3 project. Now, speaking of Web3, because of its open source and P2P nature, it's ever rapidly advancing. So it's only in Web3 because you don't need third party authorization to build your own noble dream or your project. And you don't have the limitations of a centralized server because you can source all the information from the blockchain. The pace at which innovation comes about is very fast paced. So, so you can find like 1 million crypto coins, uh, 50 projects. Like if you see my browser and all that, I may go through 50 to 100 projects in a day. It's only in Web3 that you can, that that's obtainable. So there is no knowledge base that is in order from start to finish. The material is scattered. And how I know this is because I've done 3,500 videos. I've written a notebook about Web3. You know, at the time I wrote the notebook, there was not even, in the entire notebook, there is no mention of NFTs because NFTs did not exist during the, when I wrote the notebook. And very quickly, months later, there, there are NFTs. And that's how fast paced it is. So. I believe that if I'm able to finish that uh, tutorial videos, there are going to be videos, uh, then that is a big endeavor in itself. And that's going to be the flagship product of Xayop besides the other, I call them Xayop crafted products. So one product to counter every product of the Xayop, you know, one core product of the Xayop being money. And in the PSYOP system of things, they elevate money over humans and make it the end. You know, so we're going to uh, like revert that using a PSYOP, a PSYOP movement. So 
X, then Psyop, you know, Xyop. So it's going to launch an X, but it's also going to counter X by introducing Web3 alternatives like Dbuzz. So that will be a, a strong part of the arsenal. We'll uncover every Web3 productivity tool relevant to reattaining your P2P hood, which is your innate person, you know, but the system takes that away, you know, your ability to to be a full-fledged human. You don't have that ability in the in this secular in this world, you know, because so that's the that's where Web3 comes in. You know, everyone should be in it. Not only because it's product, uh, it will empower you, but also because you will end up being in it maybe 10 years from now. You know, because the likes of Facebook, they already, like Twitter has already incorporated like tipping using cryptocurrency. You know, Facebook already has uh, NFT incorporation on, on Instagram. You know, so in a few years from now, it will start to become the staple internet. So you are better off starting out now so that you have like a 10 years edge over you know and if you are not incorporating web3 into every sphere of your ambition you are way limited you know because there's an entire audience you are missing out on that's web3 inclined there are uh, millions of applications in the web3 space that constitute productivity and opportunities that you are missing out on that are basically the same applications you know like you use but are more limitless powered by crypto so you, you are you are limited altogether so at the very least awareness is important even though you don't venture into web3 at least gather knowledge you know know uh, traverse the web3 space no, for example, if uh, I, I'm, I may be more empowered than the next person if I know like uh, a Web3 alternative of every existing application. Okay, so uh, Medium, Medium blacklists you. You know that there is a D-Buzz. You know? So even if you have that knowledge of ARM, just the knowledge alone, the awareness makes you empowered over your your peers so that's the summary of it I'm, I'm still in the Philippines and uh, my only limitation for the most part is the health thing I've mentioned and you know but I'm trying to solve that with Xyop so with Xyop the scarce model is 1000 P to P humans so I'm going to embark on Q selecting that and then the, the the ambition is to be able to move in concert and that will help me to have a support system and uh, I may be able to be I may I will become more efficient with you know with a group that can now move in concert so I think that's uh, the summary of the story and uh, what I'm, my inclination when it comes to Web3 for the most part is project building uh, because I believe that's the most powerful use case. You know, if you build a project, then you can impact generations, you can have a legacy, you can inculcate stuff, uh, you can inculcate, uh, you can create a stimuli that people react to, you can inculcate a mentality adjustment you know so projects like dbuzz they have more impact than let's say chris on his own trying to impact you know when you put a tool in people's hands and basically that's how the world has got captured you know they there's a tool in our hands of these powerful people you know and they pull the strings and put cookies in our browser you know possibly and we use this for our comfort, but then we give, we relinquish our abilities. They learn about it uh, recurrently, 
analyze it. First of all, they put you in a premise, you know, so they give you a button, an upvote, a downvote. You know, there is no third. So the time you are in that premise, you are easy to analyze. And then they build on that. And that's how the world gets captured because, but that's where Web3 comes in. There are other dynamics at play beyond the, the booleans, the binary system of things. Chris, yeah, have a quest, Chris has a question and uh, actually yes, you, yes. You, you, you mentioned a lot and it's really overwhelming that your philosophical point of view in the blockchain is really good. But let us uh, ask Chris about his question. Chris? Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I have a few bullet points um, that I'd like to uh, uh, share um, in response to some of the things that Terry said uh, or said. But the first thing that I would like to share is that it's it's very ironic um, because Ed, uh, you know, I, I work very closely here with Ed Umbau. I mean, both of us live across the street from this office, so we, we spend a lot of time together. And last night uh, before I fell asleep, I, I showed Ed my first post on Hive. And I showed him the rewards that I received um, and, you know, all of the other votes uh, combined in terms of my introductory post, I probably only received a total of maybe 10 cents, <laughs> something like that. But I received an upvote from Terry worth about a dollar twenty or $1.50. Um, and that is actually what uh, put me on a traje trajectory to build and work <laughs> over time on Hive was, was only a dollar fifty. Um, and I think that's very relevant um, to, to the idea of curating new users, you know, and, and not, not expecting them to be all stars at the very beginning, if ever. Um, but, but I would just like to point that out um, because, you know, on Hive, all of us have different reputations and, and um, we, have, we have things that we did that were very great. And then we also have criticism um, from, from other people as well. That's normal. Um, everybody receives criticism. Uh, but, you know, Arcane, she tracks stats for how many people are onboarded um, per day. And Diba's um, many days are, is actually the number one onboarder of Hive users all across the board, across the blockchain. A lot of that because of Rodell, um, the host of this uh, podcast. But I would just like to share that, that you know, one of the top apps on Hive in some aspects is largely a result of of uh, uh, Terry spreading his upvotes far and wide. Well, wow, thank you. Well, Terry, is, Terry, see, Terry also helped me in some of my posts. And Terry has been very, very a prominent character in the Filipino community of voting, uh, generously of voting content from the Filipino, uh, Filipino authors. So it's really awesome that you still have this philosophical point of view of the blockchain since your your username is surpassing giggle and then you you mentioned about censorship you mentioned about decentralization the abuse of this web to uh, uh, web to companies the CEO etc and now you are still targeting uh, P2, P2P and that's really awesome that's why we are we are here and there is there's one thing I want to ask to you about the book you have a book so uh, what happened to the book it's not a book it's a no book <laughs> yeah it's the title is kind of weird for me so tell us about the book and then you mentioned a lot of stuff cryptocurrency or blockchain stuff in there right yes yes but uh, okay it's a no book but I try to put in some world secrets inside it based on my own, you know, experience and insight. So, uh, okay, so that time I, I wrote it, I think my dad passed away or something I was, and uh, I didn't have money or something at the time. I could not even bury my dad for 17 days. Uh, so I ended up writing it during this period because what uh, blockchain was to me like i said is cctv into the truest state of the world 
You know, so there are many things unknown about the world that blockchain reveals. One reason is because, of course, this cryptocurrency incentive. You know, so knowledge that you may hoard because you want to monetize it. Now, because there's a cryptocurrency incentive, you may reveal it because somehow you'll end up getting paid using cryptocurrency. Uh, then, of course, it's immutable. The, the blockchain is immutable. So there is no deletion. And like I said earlier, people are in a state of evolution or they are mining their human in the course of using blockchain, you know, because they are interacting in a peer to peer fashion. Now, peer to peer means that you're not wary of third party influence or authorization, meaning that you can react to your full, you can act to your full fledged capacity. So there's a lot, a lot of revelation that comes from that. And now I also remember my, when I found Steam, the first person I, the, I didn't learn about Steam by reading the block, the white paper. So I don't usually read white papers to learn about a project. And my approach to learning about Steam, when you apply it to learning about Web3, instead of learning about each cryptocurrency project uh, individually, you'll be able to learn about thousands of them at once. Now, how so? So on Steam, the first thing I did on Steam was to go and study the CEO of Steam. At the time, he was Ned. You know, so that was my approach. Ned to Scott, right? Ned Scott. Yes, that was my approach to learning about about uh, about him. So I would go and read his comments, read his, uh, uh, decipher his reaction to stimuli, you know, his innermost person. In the course of reading, going through his comments and all that, and I ended up seeing the expanse of his mind and the cap of it, you know. And according to me, you are limited by that when it comes to innovation, the expanse of your mind. Many people are limit are the expanse of your mind is a subject of society. You know, so it doesn't go beyond what they know of society. In in I'm talking of in general, you know, so someone who generally knows that okay, you slap him, call nine one one. I'm just talking in general terms. I'll call nine one one. And let's say that is the the general reaction to stimuli it is likelier that when he builds an application, uh, there is going to be a one a a one click button solution to a backlash. So that's where like a downvote comes in. Now, when you extend that into governance, same thing is going to happen there. You know so. Uh, for example, in governance, you may vote on a node, on a validator, not because you support his ideals, you know, but the general notion is because you give your vote, you are supporting his ideals. And then, okay, so that's how I saw Web3. I saw it as a CCTV into the true state of the world. I learned a lot about the world that I didn't know before. And that's the approach for documenting the no book. So this notebook, I didn't resource like the internet and all that. I, I basically, like I said, looked at, uh, because when you are creating something, a blockchain, you are creating it to host humans. And generally, by virtue of today's world, there is, uh, the money is giving precedence over humans. You know, and that brings that enters the blockchain innovation as well. Even though it has the capacity to be boundless, that dynamics enters into play again, such that there is a reward pool, and then there is a predict pre prediction that humans will behave in an immoral way, and attempt to pillage the reward pool. I guess so to prevent that, you put a guard. Uh, you, you will put a guard to prevent that and suddenly blockchain becomes limited as a potent tool for 
elevating humans. It becomes restrictive to protect the money. So I saw this, uh, you know, limitations even in the blockchain industry. And then I introduced my own. You know, how do you surpass those limitations? And then I introduced my own projects such as ULogs and all that that gives precedence to elevating humans or mining uh inciting humans to mine their human you know where humans is the primary resource and that's the approach to building my own innovation so that was what the notebook is about it it's a notebook because it's the opposite of the books you know so i i try to to document the things that are not in the books okay that, so that's great and uh, i guess chris has a question with regards to that chris come in <laughs> Well, uh, I just I just realized how 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 fast time flies um, because I thought we were only in this call for about five or maybe yes, seven yes. minutes, but it's already been it's already been about forty seven minutes, um, yes. and and that's why you know one of the things that I'd like to encourage um, Terry to do bring your Discord back, um, and you know have the and this is only a recommendation it's an idea like not an instruction but. I would recommend um, that you start bringing your Discord back, um, where it can run 24/7, and at your leisure you'll be able to come in there and you know do live talks um, that you know three or five hours of talks can feel like ten minutes. <laughs> and, and you know I wasn't here, I wasn't here um, during the bull market um, preceding. I think it was uh, 2018. I, I think it was 2017 was the peak. I wasn't here in that time, um, but I have some general understanding about how how largely uh, popular your Discord was, and I would recommend that you not only bring it back, but you also find ways to um, you, you know pull your followers into other platforms, preferably Web three. I mean, you may not know, but because of Peak D, uh, we have a chat alternative, um, and it's on chat.dita.buzz, which is going to be more closely integrated soon. Um, so the idea of having an all-day uh, Discord channel, a place where people could talk, not only you, but then you could give your talks, um, you know, for five or seven, seven hours and have it feel like 20 minutes. Um, I think that could do amazing things, um, not just for you, but for Hive and for society. And I also have um, an idea for Hive, um, another project that can be founded, and I might be able to uh, uh, possibly get investors for it. Um, and I think, you know, I'll, I'll have a call with you if you're available after this about that. And it's basically making the first non-monetary utility use cases for on level two coins on high. Um, and I think that's kind of, that's the barrier. The reason why level two coins can't really, you know, take off is because it would compete with high, <laughs> you know, in terms of liquidity. And people don't like that. You know, people don't like, that's why Blurt died, Whale Shares died. Because Hive doesn't like, you know, competing in terms of market cap and liquidity. But if you make non-monetary uh, use cases for level two coins, um, then it's not so much of a threat. And I think that's what's going to expand Hive. Mm -hmm. Yo, Thank okay. you. So, well, Terry, uh, we only have one hour and uh, we're almost on the edge of the show. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you amaze me very much because you approach cryptocurrency and blockchain in such a philosophical point of view and you are getting there you are influencing us but of course we need to we need to uh, master the people the masses so that yeah we need to wake up though those those ceos those company yeah we should not be slave on those stuff and we on the web3 we on the uh, decentralized blockchain will be the pioneers we are the 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 leaders of, of the movement and we are happy that you are here terry and you are joining you. us in the bus right yes 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 i just uh, started and feel free to feel free because to share and uh, everything everything that you are free to share uh, to the community yes. uh, in the bus okay Okay, okay. Yes. So, yeah, uh, you know, you know, yeah. it's good. Uh, a Filipino application is, is very good. So much needed. 
and uh, of course uh, we continue to improve the DBAS app so uh, any parting words uh, just uh, we only have a, a short minute to go Terry oh from me yeah okay. parting words last words and uh, we're yes, about to me, go I just want to acknowledge everyone here long time I've seen them Joyce thank you for being here Antoinette as well uh, Chris has always been there and uh, yes, uh, to conclude, I will say surpassing Google it is. And now uh, we are looking forward for a better, more five years since we already knew each other for five years, and we are yes. looking forward to be with the community with you. So thank you very much uh, for the rest of the team that we are here. We have Romel, a brother. Kumusta? Mario Molave Del Mendo. Sis Joy, salamat, salamat. At narito sa pag uh, narito ang ating kaibigan na si Terry. Joaquin R. So brother, uh, thank you for coming. If you can message me, Joaquin. Uh, if you have question, Chris, Ed, Ed, thank you very much sa mga magaganda mong article. Antoinette, yung ating, uh, ating GC, yung ating mga newbies. Nako, uh, tayo, uh, talagang alagang-alaga at mo. Uh, supportahan natin ang mga upvote at syempre, let's build community di ba Terry? It's peer-to-peer P2P and uh, uh, how's your uh, family there in the Philippines? Last point Terry My, fam my family increased as in although my family has increased now because my I've, I've already brought my, my wife's sister here and her dad so since the last when I saw Chris we have increased now in number. When I saw Chris, I saw him with uh, my wife and child. But we are more now. Yeah, and we were happy. You are already a Filipino from us and from the heart. And, uh, so, uh, with all those things that you uh, experience, you're still here, we're alive after the pandemic. And we are survivors and we are happy. So, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Terry. To the rest, Sir Chris. So, we will end this show. Ang dami nating natutunan. Philosophical pa yung approach. Nako, grabe. Sana na-absorb natin at magiging bahagi po yan. Kasi totoo naman, may philosophical point of view sa blockchain and cryptocurrency. There is not just money. It's not just earning. We are dealing here with concepts The, which is the foundation of the freedom of the future. Tama, di ba, yeah. Terry? Freedom yes, of yes. the future. So, thank you very much. And uh, I guess uh, uh, we will end the show. And uh, bye-bye po. As I, open, uh, as I open it, yan ako. Maraming maraming salamat po. Bye-bye po. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Ati Joyce, bye-bye. Ah, bye pa. Ed. <laughs> Ayan na ko. Kita nyo naman. Ah, uh, ang ganda ng naging usapan. So, uh, gusto ko lang i-emphasize yung na, na, na i-digest natin ng konti, di ba? Na kung saan ipinaluwanag sa atin ni brother, ni brother Terry, si Surpassing Google, yung malalalim na konsepto why we are here in the blockchain. Yes, freedom, decentralization, di ba? Yan yung pinaglalaban din natin. Yes, you can earn. Totoo naman yun. Hindi naman mag -e effort ang maraming tao dahil kung hindi sila mag -e earn Pero, hika nga, ah, itong mga konseptong ito, ito yung mga medyo bago. Ano? Kasi kita na natin yung problema sa ating mga uh, web 2. Ano? Nakikita na natin. Sabi nga ni Terry, ilang beses na siyang na-deplatformed. Ano? At uh, tayo naman, at yung iba, marami, marami na nasa social media na na-deplatform. Na kung saan, yung konsepto ng freedom, ay, nawawala. Ay, paano natin maibabalik? O paano natin mapapanatili? Kaya nga, narito ang sinasabi nating Web3, narito ang sinasabi nating uh, decentralization. Account ownership, narito yung mga freedom na kung saan ay dapat daladala natin. So, ngayon po, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsama po ninyo sa akin at sana po ay natutunan ninyo. May natutunan po ko yung, may napulot ko yung 
magaganda nga ideya o konsepto. At yan nga, yung lalim, yung lalim ng mga talakayan. Maraming maraming salamat at hanggang po sa susunod na Sunday na ating pagta, pagtalakay with regards to cryptocurrency and blockchain. Maraming salamat po.